So every evening, right before you're about to switch off the television and go to bed, your pooch enters the living room. It sprawls out on the floor and seems to be watching TV. In 2012, in the UK, a company producing dog food created an unusual commercial. It was made to attract dogs' attention. The ad used special high-frequency sounds. They were inaudible to the human ear, but dogs could hear them very well. The idea was simple. A pooch gets so entranced by the commercial that owners can't but notice it. And the next dog food they buy is the advertised product. In theory, the idea sounded promising. In reality, most dogs showed no reaction whatsoever. Meaning ads can't probably manipulate pets as well as they influence people. But even though this experiment was a failure, dogs still do find watching TV interesting. You may have noticed your fluffy companion react to animals, moving objects, and other images appearing on the screen. It's almost as if they see the same things you do. If we talk about colors, TV and reality don't look different to dogs. They see the world in shades of yellow and blue, and can't pick out green and red hues. Plus, canine vision is somewhat blurred. Dogs process what's happening on the screen in a different way than you do. When you watch something, your brain needs 16 to 20 video frames per second to detect movement. For your pooch, this number must be more than 70 frames per second. Let's say your pet is seated in front of an old TV. In this case, what the animal sees looks like a flip book. If it's a modern television, your pup is likely to be much more interested, because modern TV sets have a faster video frame rate. As for the content itself, dogs react to the same stuff that would attract their attention in real life. It can be squeaking toys, commands, and other dogs barking, growling, yipping, and whatnot. If the TV screen isn't showing anything related to dogs, though, your pet will probably remain completely uninterested. Hey, look, it's your friend George, and he has a dog you've never seen with him. That's because it's his sister's new pup, and it's so cute, too. You desperately want to pet it. But instead of just getting down to it, here's a few things to consider. First, turn to your friend and ask if it's okay to pet the dog. For all you know, this dog in particular might not like to be petted. It might be afraid of strangers or even a bit skittish around them. Who knows? It might just be having a bad hair day. Maybe the mail carrier didn't bring it a cookie this time around while delivering the mail. Looking at the dog, you can start to approach it carefully. Or better yet, you can let the dog approach you instead. See how it reacts. Definitely don't rush with open arms if you're coming in for a hug. Don't make any sudden moves and don't look fearful, or it might give a signal for the little guy to go into a defensive stance and curl up. You don't want that. The end goal here is to make it be your friend, right? If you really want to be sure it's willing to engage with you, ignore it. Okay, that sounds counterproductive. But picture this. You're out talking to your friend, pretending the pup doesn't even exist. It starts getting interested in you because you're a new person and now you've got its attention. The rest is easy. Still, if you do decide to approach it, let it take the final steps. Oh, and don't look it directly in the eye. Get this, you know how polite it is to look someone in the eye while you're talking to them? It can even be considered common courtesy. Well, in the pooch world, it means the opposite. They might not like you too much if you look them in the eye. In fact, I'm fairly sure they might think you're rude instead. Okay, you've successfully approached the dog you really want to pet. Now, you let it sniff you. Relax your posture, but slowly, as you don't want to startle your new friend. You can extend your hand now, but still slowly. Do it with your palm facing down and your fingers slightly curled under for safety reasons. A little nip can still hurt. Let the dog get comfortable with you. If you notice that it's sniffing your hand for a long while, let it. Dogs need to get comfortable with strangers too. If it gets too excited though, it might become the one invading your private space instead by jumping around and licking you. Don't fret though, just remain calm. If you start getting uncomfortable, you can get yourself out of the situation by turning away with your arms folded. Like this, you'll become boring to the dog and it'll start losing interest in you. The owner can then have a chance to calm it down or even take it away. If you're speaking to the dog, be sure to use English, as this is the most common language for dogs. Actually, I made that up. 
Rather, just make sure to use a calm and reassuring tone. Here's the part you've been waiting for. You can go ahead and pet it. Now, don't jump it and start hugging it, though. Keep the pace you've had with it so far. Don't pet it on its head. Your hand won't be in their field of vision if you do this. And you've got to admit, a hand coming out of nowhere would freak out just about anyone. You can start by stroking the dog's ears and neck. They also enjoy rubs on their back and shoulders. While petting the dog, keep paying attention to its body language. Because if their body is slightly curved, they're wagging their tail and circling you with excitement. It's a good sign, and it means they want to get to know you. One thing we love about dogs when they're playing is extending their legs on the floor while bowing down. If they do this, you're in. They want to play. But be on the watch for behavior that indicates they're not enjoying your company all that much. If they're showing you their teeth or growling at you, that's a sign to back off. A stiff standing tail can also mean they're feeling threatened. There's another way dogs can show they're stressed and anxious too, by licking their lips or even yawning. During your interaction, always respect the dog and keep in mind they have their own boundaries too. You go back home and your own dog, Riley, is waiting for you at your doorstep. Excited as ever, he licks your face and jumps around you. His best friend is home. To make your dog love you even more, get down to its level once in a while and lie on the floor with your best bud. When you do this, give it loads of kisses and affection. They love it and will be sure to give back twice as much. Now, you might get a bit of drool on your face, but it's for a good reason. I mean, come on, just look how happy it is looking at you. Why is it that dogs like carrying sticks so much? Well, first of all, it comes naturally to them. It's based on their instincts to retrieve things when they hunt. But it might be that they just want to play with you, and you've forgotten the ball at home. A clear sign of this is if it drops the stick right at your feet and starts looking up at you. Dogs love the smell and texture of sticks, so they love gnawing on them. This even helps keep their gums and teeth healthy and relieves pain. Coming home back from a walk, your dog might lay down after a while and start licking his paws. This is completely normal because even though they don't need to groom themselves as often as cats do, dogs still try to keep themselves clean, especially their paws. If they do it more often than usual, though, you should take a closer look. It might mean that they've injured their paw or there might be something stuck in it that they just can't get rid of. Make sure to examine the paw that they're licking thoroughly to make sure there's nothing wrong. If you're unsure, go hear what the vet has to say. Your dog shakes its toys with a crazed passion when it's playing, doesn't it? This is something they got from their ancestors, the wolves and their hunting instincts. Don't worry though, it doesn't mean your dog's aggressive, it's just having fun. Like cats, dogs also get zoomies, the burst of energy that makes them run around the house like nuts. But it's a little different for dogs. They also do this because they're happy. Many dogs don't like being bathed, and it makes them feel nervous and anxious. When they're done, some will zoom off like an indie car. They do this because it helps them shake off water and burn off that pent-up nervous energy. Hearing a siren will more likely than not make your dog howl. Contrary to popular opinion, they're not just doing this because they dislike the noise or it hurts their ears. It also triggers instincts to howl because they think of the siren as another dog that's howling too. It can also happen when people play the piano or flute next to them. Several things can trigger their howling. Yep, my dog Riley loves to howl when I'm playing my trumpet. Some dogs have an instinct to eat grass. Some might just enjoy how it tastes, but it's more likely that they eat it because it used to help them clear bad things like parasites out of their bodies. This works because grass is so high in fiber. You should discourage this as a dog owner, though, because the grass can cause problems with digestion. When your dog sits on your feet, it means they're letting other dogs know that you belong to them. They're marking their territory and showing affection while they do it. Dogs say hello to each other by sniffing each other's butts. They do this because their incredible sense of smell allows them to learn a lot about this new acquaintance. Some can even determine if the other pup is feeling a particular emotion. A yawn for a dog can have the same meaning as it does for us, sleepiness. But it has other meanings as well. If a dog yawns while you're trying to train it, it might mean that it's getting frustrated. Letting out a big yawn might be its way of giving itself a mental break. 
It might even mean they've gotten sick of what they're doing and they want to stop. Not only that, it can also be a sign that they're stressed and nervous, like when they're at the vet and clearly don't want to be there. On the other hand, it might mean that they're enthusiastic, like the yawn before going on a walk. That's always a good one. Rolling on their back asking for a belly rub is something a lot of dogs do. It feels great for them to get their first stroke, but it's also a sign that they trust you. Ever notice how their little leg kicks when you scratch their belly? It's called a scratch reflex, and they have no control over it. You're activating nerves under his skin when you scratch his belly. Those are the same nerves that act when dogs are trying to get rid of something irritating, like a bug that's stuck on their fur. Another sign of your dog's affection for you is when it licks you. Their moms used to clean and bond with them the same way when they were puppies. It's a great way to get your attention to when you're on the couch too busy looking at your phone. And when they do it to your face, it's likely they either want food or just want a taste of that leftover meatloaf you had for lunch. Tail wagging has a bunch of different meanings for dogs. Some research has claimed that if dogs' tails are wagging more to the right, it means they're showing happy emotions, while wagging to the left might mean the feelings are more negative. Their tails are a gateway for us to understand them better. A scared dog will usually have its tail down, and an alert or excited dog will hold their tail much higher than usual. If they're curious, their tail will be straight. And finally, a stiff and vertical tail means that you should watch out for aggression. You might feel sad if you hear your dog crying or whimpering, but it doesn't always mean the same thing it does in humans. Dogs use these cries as a form of communication that they learned while they were puppies. Puppies whimper to ask their moms for stuff. So when they grow older, that's how they communicate with us, too. These cries can mean all kinds of things. It could mean that the dog's excited. It might mean that they want your attention, or even that they got hurt. There isn't one good explanation for every whimper. But you might actually be encouraging your dog to whimper, too. If you take your dog out for a walk every time it whines, it learns that whining helps it to get what it wants, so it's a learned behavior as well. Still, if they're doing this all day long, consult with your local vet. Dogs often run and hide from vacuum cleaners because their ears are so sensitive. Not all dogs dislike them, though, and some might even chase the vacuum as a game. Some dogs absolutely love to chase their tails. It's an excellent way for them to spend their energy, almost like zoomings, and they're having fun while they do it. But if you notice them doing this all the time, they might need to get checked at the vet, and in some cases, it might even be a sign of obsessive-compulsive disorder. Try to distract it while it chases its tail. Call them and say you're going for a walk. That should work, but if it doesn't, go to the vet. A farmer is working in the fields when all the sheep suddenly escape from their pen. They're scattering everywhere, far and wide. Surely the wolves are lurking nearby, waiting for the perfect opportunity to strike. One farmer can't possibly gather all those sheep, even on horseback. But one dog can. No, not a dog on horseback. The dog could outrun the sheep and herd them in. Dogs were domesticated between 14,000 and 29,000 years ago. Their initial purpose? To help us humans with day-to-day -day tasks we couldn't do ourselves. Eventually, we discovered that dogs of different sizes and skills can do certain jobs better. A German Shepherd would help. Well, Shepherds in Germany. Dobermans were used for security, since they come off as intimidating tough cookies. Or take other breeds, like Terriers. They were bred to sniff out rats and other vermin in hard-to-reach places. Dogs were the original pest control before there was a 1-800 number you could call in a snap. Hey, thanks, Fido! Greyhounds are slick-looking racers and were bred for hunting. They could chase game up to 45 miles per hour, making them the fastest dog breed in the world. Good luck keeping this dog in an apartment! Mastiffs have been around since ancient Roman times. They were used to fend off lions and other large animals, making them the perfect watchdog for protection. They may seem vicious and scary, but they're actually gentle giants that love playing and lounging around. The St. Bernard is a big fluffy dog that can withstand frigid temperatures. They're used to locate lost mountain climbers and travelers stuck in snowstorms or avalanches. They're also known as the best couriers in the dog world and can pull a cart on their own. If you live in an icy land all year round, chances are you'd have a couple Siberian Huskies on your side. They're helpful for transportation and do well in a group. The people who live in such conditions use these dogs to pull their sleds from one place to another to this day.
But then, you get some really, uh, let's say, unique-looking but still adorable doggos. I'm looking at you, Bull Terrier! These smooth-snouted canines are known to be pretty tough in the dog world. They thrive on human companionship and can't get enough playtime. Ah, and then there's pugs, our favorite bug-eye companions. Pugs have been around for hundreds of years in China as the perfect lap dogs. They're also known to be the clowns of the dog world. They were eventually introduced to Europe and went global from there. They became so popular that they appeared in paintings as far back as the 1700s. One of the oldest dog breeds ever, and the only one with a blue tongue, is the Chow Chow. Chows might look intimidating, but as it usually goes, they're super lovable cuties. If you're a cat person, this breed just might convert you. Chows love their alone time and are often compared to cats that way. They may not be super keen on making friends, but they're incredibly loyal companions. Experts believe these walking teddy bears originally came from Mongolia in northern China. And after many years, they slowly began moving south with nomadic tribes as hunting dogs. Like pugs, illustration of chow chows appeared on pottery and in paintings as far back as 2,000 years ago. When their popularity reached the rest of the world, the chow chow name just stuck. One of the first wolf dogs were hybrids between wolves and Pomeranians. Yup, those cute little accessory pooches are part wolf. But the Pomeranians of the 18th century were nothing like the ones today. They were tough, muscular working dogs that used to help shepherds with livestock and even plowing the field in snowy conditions. Terriers, greyhounds, mastiffs, pugs… Imagine any type of dog, and you'll see tons of variety. All those different canine shapes and breeds resulted from thousands of years of living with humans. Through selective breeding, dogs could be sort of customized over generations. You could call them GMOs, genetically modified organisms, but they did it the long way. You could make them taller, more muscular, with longer or shorter snouts. The list is endless, depending on the job. The environment also plays a role in canine evolution. One fossil study of ancient dogs in North America found that their bone structure changed with a cooling climate. They went from ambush pouncers in the jungle, sort of like cats, to long-distance runners chasing down their meal. In the end, we come to 190 recognized dog breeds in the U.S. alone. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.